Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, Father God, we thank you for saving our soul. We ask you to forgive us of any sins we've done, knowing and unknowingly. Holy Spirit, we welcome you onto this podcast. We ask you to help us, give us wisdom and knowledge so we may understand the word so we can apply it to our everyday life. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it. Father God, we ask you, you get the increase and I get the decrease. We ask you to help me to teach in the spirit and not in the flesh in jesus name amen so the verse of today is romans 2 28 and 29 a person is not a jew who is one only outwardly nor is circumcision merely outward and physical no a person is a jew who is inwardly and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit not by the written code such a person prays is not from other people but from god circumcised heart Christian truths, I'm going to say it and pause between each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I'm inwardly changing. I am praising God. I'm relying on God. God freed me. When we go to the store, everything is labeled, including the owls, the bathroom, fruits, veggies, so we can know what it is. A lot of people want it to be branded by a company. They they want a brand or a company that they can trust. When God asked me to start the ministry, I said to him, I need a name to start the ministry. He said, yes, I know. And I said, well, thinking to myself, this will slow everything down. I already have one for you. And I said, oh, okay, what is it? He said, surrender ministries. He knew it would mean something to me because when I gave my life to him, I always said, I'm surrendering my life to you. And it meant to have. And it meant to have, it meant everything to have a ministry with that name. What's on a label of anything or what's the brand of anything has a background, has a meaning, but it doesn't mean anything if the company or brand doesn't have sound principles or it doesn't stand for something suitable. I like whipped cream and I only like a particular brand, which is Ready Whip, because it's something I'm used to and it tastes good. It's it's what's on the inside that matters. That's like us. It doesn't matter if you are circumcised or a real Jew or a Jew. All that matters is what's on the inside and what does your heart say? A lot of people get people get focused on the real Jews and that they lose point of the meaning behind the Bible and salvation. The word tells us today that when what we do and who we are on the outside or what we do by the law doesn't make us more righteous. It doesn't mean we are more than someone else. We have to understand that it gets it get we have to understand what gets us into heaven is our values, our belief, and what's the reflection of our heart. What is your heart saying about you? Deuteronomy 10 and 6, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. Some of us are worried about the outside and we're worried about our outfits and shoes, but are we worrying about the matters of the heart? We can see the most beautiful people in the world, but their attitude can make them ugly. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but the Holy Spirit is telling us we need to get ready. The only thing people want to be taught about or, or, or want to be preached about is blessings. What about changing our heart? What about modifying how you treat others and say things to people? God is going to bless who we who he wants to bless, but our heart needs to be in a better place. We need to take the foreskin off our heart and stop being stubborn and allow God's word to change us. Romans 7 and 6, but now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in a new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. We no longer live by the law. Anyone who's trying to live by the law is wasting their time and wearing themselves out. God had done away with the law when he sent his son to be the savior. Yes, we can use the law as a guideline, but we can't live solely on the law. Jesus came and died and rose again. And he said, I did this so your life can be so much easier, not harder. I did this so you can rely on me, not the law. I did this so you can be part of my blood and not your own doings. We can't save ourselves, nor can we change what's on the inside. But God can. We have to understand that when we worry about what our heart is saying and not what's on us, we will 
change because the moment we take the tension off our clothes and places it place it in our heart on our heart we will start seeing clearly, but until we release that, we won't learn and understand that our heart needs to match the label we tote around. Every day we're just saying we are a Christian or a man or woman of God. We aren't. One time Peter had a man who wanted his gift and he asked Peter if he could pay for it. Peter said this to Acts 8 and 20, but Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for your thinking God's gift can be bought. You have you can have no part in this for your heart is wrong with God. He said, because your heart isn't right. When our heart isn't right, it comes out of our mouth and others can hear and see it. This man didn't realize that he was saying he just wanted what he wanted. And that's the same with us. We want what we want. We don't care what we have to say as long as we get it. But what we must understand is if our heart isn't right with God, we will stay these same lost people until we realize we have to shed the things of the heart to be right with God. Today, God is asking for us to take whatever it is that's around our heart and minds and allow him to change us. Allow his words to penetrate our hearts. Because we can say all day that we are going to heaven, but if our mind isn't right, the word of God tells us we won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. A lot of us is losing our inheritance to this world, drugs and sex and drinking and having a bad attitude. Allow God to fix you, to heal you, but he can't do it until we are ready to circumcise our heart. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you have done for us. We ask that you forgive us of our sins we have done. We ask that you give us strength to show us how you want us to stand in your word. It, it says every day we, we, we ask that you give us strength and show us how to stand in your word every day we we'll allow ourselves to let things and situations to change us the way we view things father we ask to for you to circumcise our heart take away the things and emotion that are changing us to to be stuck lord we thank you for what you have done what what you're going to do and and have done in our lives we praise you for everything in jesus mighty name amen so the topic today is circumcise my heart a lot of us are dealing with so much and we have allowed life to cause us to deal with so much and a lot of us what we do is i'm trying to think the best way to say this what we do is we compensate for what we're feeling on the inside so a lot of people you see with these big homes, big cars, nice clothing, this and that, they're, they're hiding what they're hurting with in their heart. They think having this lavish lifestyle would take the place of what they're feeling in their heart. But what we have to understand is that it's no matter what brand of clothes you put on, what type of shoes you have on, no matter what kind of house you have, no matter what kind of money you're making, what kind of job you have, it doesn't matter. Because if your heart is full of pain, if your heart is full of bitterness and malice, we need God to come in and circumcise our heart. Because a lot of us are inwardly hurting. And we have to let go of that so we can make room for the Holy Spirit to come in and change us. No, this is not something we can do, brothers and sisters, friends. We can't take care of this. But God can some of us are carrying such a heavy load and a hurt that we don't know how to let go because we're scared to let go because this this feeling this ache that came so much of a part of us that we can't see another way to act we can't see another way to be but the holy spirit is saying today if you let go i can heal you if you let go i can touch you if you let go i can circumcise your heart and put in a new heart but we have to let go. He's not going to make us. I see a lot of us are worried about brands. When I, I like Ready Whip. I like whipped cream. And um, when I go to the store, I immediately buy the red can of Ready Whip. They have a blue can. They have a red can. I always buy the red, the red can. And so one day I was using it and my older sister say, Lou, you, you might need to try the can in the tub. You need, might need to try the whipped cream in the tub. I said, no, I don't want to try that. She said, why? I said, because I'm used to my whipped cream. I shake the can up. I spray it. And I'm gone. She said, no, the thing in the tub is much better. She said, you'll like it. 
Well, one day I go to Walmart and I looked and looked and looked and the only thing they had was the one in the blue can. I, I knew I didn't like the one in the blue can because I tried it. I didn't like it. It tasted gross, but to each his own. So I seen the one in the tub and I said, okay, I guess you're coming home with me today. So I, I got ready to make me something. I put a little whipped cream on top and I tried it and I loved it. I have not been back to ready whip in a minute because I love the thing in the tub. One, because the tub, I can close it. I don't have to worry about the little lid flipping off because when sometimes it's hard to get off, you know, I lose the lid. But I like the thing in the tub because it closes, it's secure. This is just like our spiritual life. We're used to what we used to we do. We're used to going off on people. We're used to carrying this hurt. We're, we're used to feeling this way. We're used to not feeling good enough. We're used to feeling angry. We're used to, to, to doing whatever we want to do. But some of us want to try Christ, but we're scared because we feel like we'll, we'll lose it. We're, it's not going to be good. It's, he's not going to be good enough. He's, he's not going to be what I think everyone says he is. Or if I pray every day, I, I don't know if I'm going to have time for it. But the moment you try to pray more, the moment you fully give yourself to God, you find out that he's secure. You, you find out what you used to do isn't that great. You find out that the way you talk to people isn't right. So you start shedding that off. You find out that you sleep better when you pray. So you start praying more. You find out that when you... When you talk to them about your problems, when you get through, you, you don't feel so angry. So that sheds off. You, you see what he does? It, it's a process. And yeah, it was scary to change from ready whip from the, the can to the lid. But with the lid, it's secure. And with God, we're secure. With this lifestyle that we try to lead, it's, it's not secure. It's always up and down, fluctuating. Our emotions is always up and down and fluctuating. But with God, is steady. It is steady. It's sturdy. And I don't have to worry about him disappearing. I don't have to worry about him one day judging me on what I told him. I don't have to worry about one day he changing to be this angry person, to being this nice person. I don't have to worry about where he at when I need him. He's always there. And every time I go in the store, they have the containers of, of whip. But sometimes when I go in the store, they still don't have that whipped cream. Of course, I can go to every other store. I can probably purchase that whipped cream. But you see the hassle that I'm doing, I'm getting in and out of the car, going in this store and that store, and they still probably won't have it. But the thing in the tub is always there. That's like God. You can go here. You can have illicit moments with this person here. It could be great, but it won't last. I, I could go over there and probably smoke a joint with that person, and it won't last. It, it, it's just a high, right? I can go to the A B store, C store, give me the biggest bottle of tequila, and sit there and drink it, right? It, it won't last. It'd be gone in the morning, right? But the thing about God, come here. Let me tell you the thing about God. I can go to my prayer closet. I can get on my knees. I can call on the name of the Lord and he'd be there. I don't have to go this place and that place. All I have to do is shut my door. All I got to do is close my door. All I got to do is close my car door. All I got to do is go outside and I can call on the name of the Lord and he'd be there. That's the best thing about God. Some of us is ready to let go of the things that we're carrying, but it's so heavy. It's so, so heavy. We're scared to let go. And the Holy Spirit is saying to you today, I'm with you. I can carry it if you give it to me. You don't have to worry about carrying the hurt. You don't have to worry about being misunderstood. You don't have to worry about crying alone. I'm right there. You don't have to worry about people picking on you anymore and making fun of what you do and how you speak. I'm right there. You don't have to worry about your flaws. I don't care about your flaws. I care about your heart. Because we can fix that. We can work on that together. 
The thing is about people, they, they want to change you to make you fit into their box. But the thing about God is he wants to mold you to, to make you greater, to make you better. He doesn't want to control you. People want to control you. Things want to control you. Drugs want to control you. Drinking wants to control you. People want to control you. But God wants to free you. So today. So today. If you're looking to be free. And you're looking for something. Someone. A God. That can give you freedom. Choose God. Don't choose nothing else. I can sit here all day and tell you how great he is. I can sit here all day and tell you how he blessed me. I can sit here all day and tell you the many stories from David to Abraham to Moses to Peter to Paul. But until you pick up your word, until you shut your closet door, until you get on your knees and experience him, you won't truly know him. Know him for yourself. Know that he can heal you from any hurt. Know that he can peel back every layer of your heart, your broken heart. Because some of us have taped up our heart. Because we know that's the only way it stays together is if we tape it. But God says, if you unravel it, Praise God. If you unravel it and give it to me, I can make you whole. I can free your soul. I can show you what true love is. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will love you like no one else loves you. The burden that you're carrying, the hurt that you're carrying, no, you don't have to carry it alone. All you have to say is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What I'm carrying is so heavy. And I feel so alone. In the moment you say those words, I can guarantee you that he'd be there. Just like that. Because he's waiting to save us. He's waiting to make us whole. But it's up to us to choose him. It's up to us to pray to him. It's up to us to let go. I hope you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loved you. If you're looking for the memory verse, the verse of the day, further reading, reference, and even a link to the devotional, You'll find that in the bio. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow any major platforms. Remember to share with a friend or a family member. And please share on your social media. Be blessed. Thank you.